the Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Wanna bet? S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. So I came into the office and I thought, we have a Golden Knights jersey. I'm sure we can hold that up and wave that in the air. And I don't even know how we have it in the first place. But Jesse stole it and put it on. The way we have it in the first place is it's mine. Yeah, it's Steve's jersey. Jesse, oh. can you hold your arms out like this? Okay, mm. this is where the sleeve ends, right here. But you're very clever. You have the same colored long sleeve shirt underneath What's, it. What, was, does Adam have a secret? Hmm? Does Adam have a secret under there? Oh, I got plenty of secrets. What is that? What is that secret? Well, but what do you what is listen? When you ask a man, what's that secret under there? Yeah. There's a lot of. Are you wearing words. Vegas Golden Knights booty pajamas? No, I'm no. What's the secret, Adam? Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I figured it out. There's a secret. Phil Kessel is a three-time. What? <laughs> champion. Hold on, I want to find. I want to find. There's one that's plain. That's for Jesse. And the reason it's plain. What? Is I didn't know What's Jesse's that? order. Um, oh, for a hot dog? But I got hot dogs for all of us. It's a little hot dog toast. Burgers <laughs> Priest does hot dogs? And I got Steve, his, he's got, he, Steve has, Jesse, if you wanted some ketchup. Oh, um, yeah, I would love some Steve, toppings. <laughs> Steve, I don't have anything else. I don't know how you take your, but I know Steve's order. This because is Because I mustard. swore I'd never forget it because Steve is a psychopath and only takes mustard and pickles. Um, well, it's mustard and onions, but I do like pickles. Oh, okay. All right, good. <laughs> it's mustard and onions is yeah. your order. I don't. I, Mustard and onions. I like flavor. So I just want to do a, a flavor town. A, a quick little cheers to our boy Phil Kessel on his third Stanley Cup. Ooh. Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> do it again, Jesse. Do it again. Have you seen the video of the guy eating the glizzy and he does it whole? No. Mm. What's a glizzy? <laughs> so he, he takes the hot dog. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he swallows it whole. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> I can't do that. But mm. a hot dog. We should not have all taken a bite at the same time. Well, listen, yeah, it's awful. Yeah, it's good awful ASMR. Podcasting. Um, Bill, Woo! I have a video for you, and this happened on Put stage. Put down the meat. Um, Put down the glizzy. Do not rub the glizzy on. Me. <laughs> Jesse, there is a video. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's so gross. I've never been. I've never seen somebody or, eat a hot dog less comfortably. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's I'm so just, mad we have an ice oak. Okay. Man. Like, ugh. man. Oh, that's a good hot dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I. Oh, it smells disgusting. It's here. a very small studio. You like this, Maddie? Does this smell great, Maddie? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. This it's is, bad. I am. Um, um, oh, so, Steve or Jesse, I sent you a video here. This is Bill Foley back in uh, Bill Foley, older of the gold, owner of the Golden Knights back in 2016 when yeah. Vegas was awarded a franchise. Right. This is before they yes. did the draft this is before they yes. did anything. This is Bill Foley making a big prediction. He said this several times, but this is the only one time I could see him on camera doing it. Can we play this? Yes, we can. I doubt it. <laughs> we can play this. Come on. It's, it's from the NHL old. Network. They don't check. They don't check. <laughs> Screw the NHL. Hey, NHL Network. No, I'm kidding. All right, fine. Bill Foley said, yes. I want to be in the playoffs in three years. I want a Stanley Cup in six years. He actually originally said seven, but then he said six, and he said, that's the standard. I consider that being very patient. Man, I wish Bill Foley had bought the Leafs. Now, um, Matthew Kachuk did not play. It was announced before the game because he had a broken sternum, uh, and a sternum is the bone that connects your ribs together down the center of your chest. I had to look it up. Um, uh, It was reported that Matthew Kachuk uh, had his brother Brady help him out of bed after his pregame nap during game four or before game four. Um, It is beyond psychotic that he played at all. Yeah. In game four. Um, And like Paul Maurice laughed. I mean, like this is what a gamer Matthew Kachuk is. Kachuk had Florida's like best three chances. Yes. In that mm-hmm. game. Yes. And uh how like he's one hit away from maybe never playing again. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. I mean, that's how you get a collapsed lung, Patrice Bergeron. Yeah, well, like right? <laughs> if you like imagine someone caught Kachuk the way he caught Eichel. Right flush in the chest. Yep. And he already has a broken sternum. I'm not a doctor. Now w- so 
sternum is what took off today. If you listen to the Paul Maurice quote, he didn't actually sound sure what the injury was. He said sternum, clavicle, SI joint. And when he said SI joint, I was like, Jesus Christ, he had fractured his SI joint because I was thinking about it in my back. Oh, yeah. Because that's what I have issues with. And I was like, I can't imagine being on skate. I believe with the that. term for that is sports interaction joint. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Your SI <laughs> joint. That's right. Well, it's, it was a dangle doozy. That's right. <laughs> but no, and then, but then I remembered, um, uh, so I, uh, you know that video of me getting blown up at hockey where y yes. a guy collapsed? Accidentally. Accidentally. You, Accidentally. You ran, you guys ran into each other. <laughs> You're blown up. In yeah, well, he ran into me a lot more than I ran into him. Yeah. Put it that way. So I, there's a, a joint in my chest, like that connects your clavicle to your chest. I don't know how to properly describe it. That clicks now, like permanently because of that hit. That I think is what Maurice was referring to. Mm. That joint in there. So any of that, like, I don't know how Kachuk absorbs a hit. I don't know how he throws a hit. I mean, he obviously couldn't, but like even a net front battle. Oh, yeah. I don't know how he got his like arms above his head for a slap shot, let alone putting a sh shirt on. Yeah, he didn't play in pretty much the entire third period of game number four there, and you understand why, but it'd be interesting to go back and watch that game four and watch just to see how he's playing now that we know what the injury is Yes, and see if you can spot it while he's on the ice. Well, I, I did that a little bit with Patrice Bergeron, um, who scored in game five of that series with the Panthers somehow. But if you go and look, yeah, that guy's back's fucked. Mm -hmm. if, if you go and look, like, he was very reluctant to hinge and uh, didn't look comfortable. Do you have the Aaron Ackblad injuries? I, oh, my God. Well, I know that starts with a broken foot. Yeah, I can read uh, it in, here. In the want. Boston series. Basically though. the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, so go ahead. Aaron Ekblad... Uh, he has an injury that includes a broken foot, which he suffered in the first round, two separate shoulder dislocations, oh. a torn oblique, and a pass concussion test. And this is a guy who's had many, many concussions. That's insane. Absolutely insane. The, the broken foot is ridiculous. Well, it, Eric Carlson did it too. Yeah. Like, is it like I need a doctor to explain how hockey players are able to play through broken feet? Mm -hmm. Like, is it that it's in a boot and it's held yeah. tight? So when I sprained my ankle, one of the things was that I could go back on the ice a little earlier because your boot acts as a kind of a cast. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's so tight in there and you just tie your skates uh, the correct amount where it's not putting too much pressure on the hurt area. You can skate around in that. Because there's no movement uh, really in the ankle because it's kind of stationary inside oh, of the boot geez. of the skate. So, oh, so you can't <laughs> hurt it more. It's just exactly. really, really painful. Exactly. So oh, that's, that's, that's the I, thing with the injury is if you can't injure it more and if you can tolerate whatever, I don't know, pain you might have or they, they take the, the painkillers before the game, which is awful, um, then you can just even get, you can get by with it. And it's, but it's that on top of the, Two shoulder dislocations and the oblique, and you had a you had looked like you might have a concussion, but you passed it. Jeez. Like all of that compounded is how do you get out of bed in the morning? Four players playing with broken bones. That that's the part I always think of. I think adrenaline gets these guys through the games. Mm -hmm. The games to me are almost the least heroic part. Waking up in the morning. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. Like the utter misery. Like the how do you, I, like, so much harder than going into any board battle, I think, is that long journey from your bedroom to the kitchen. Yeah. Even, like, if you, say you lost a game, and then that night you got to go home and then go to bed, and maybe you got to take the dog for a walk or something, you know? Like, oh. imagine that, just life. After after you lose, you, you're you already hurting, you lose a game, then you got to go home, you got to do all your normal shit. How, how stoked are you? How absolutely excited are you? To go on like a four hour flight Just from Vegas to Florida. Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh my God. Man. Uh, I want to, uh, I also, I want to throw this out there. I want to do a little shout out to Matthew Ryan. He's a listener to the show. And I'm going to take you back to October 16th, 2022, which is the eve of this season. And at sportsinteraction.com. Oh. Matthew placed a 
five dollar. He's he's it's a double and a half two dollar Steve. Five dollar bet on a pinata pick. His pinata spit out the Vegas Golden Knights. Wow. And his payout last night was $145. Way. <laughs> That's go. not bad That's at all. That's pretty damn good. Wow. And I thought said, you were going to say it spit out a Vegas Florida final. Yeah. And I was going to faint. No, that would have been crazy. Yeah. Uh, he said, big shout out to Dave on that one. And for you guys, uh, and for and to you guys for showing me Dave. So big shout out to Dave. We'll, there you uh, go. we'll give Dave his, his props on Friday when we see him again. But pretty wild, huh? That's a Jesse. Did That's you win I something? Call you. I, he's not the only person to win. Oh, all right, all right. One all right. of us placed a bet on the Vegas Golden Knights to win the Stanley Cup. They put a big hole, two dollars of bet credits on the Vegas Golden Knights, and I won a dollar sixty-four. Hey, let's go! A dollar, David Cam. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't brag about this, but on May thirty-first, my my last one bet. This is how bad I've been. Uh, my two dollar bet on Brad for Living being the Toronto Maple Leafs next general manager paid out four dollars and forty cents. Oh, you uh, that's uh, that's a pretty cool bet. I did bet on that. <laughs> so, and you know, you can bet that, and you can win that. <laughs> so, just throwing that out there. Now, uh, Vegas to get to the actual game, Vegas destroyed Florida nine to three. Uh, Florida wasn't really ever in this. Aiden Hill, Aiden Hill was unreal. That glove save was incredible. Yep. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Alec Martinez almost had another Stanley Cup winning game winning goal, but former Panther Riley Smith actually scored it because the Panthers made it or they did get to three. I was so dialed in on the Martinez stat because I had it ready to go. Yeah. It would have been the stat would have been 14% of the goals Alec Martinez ever scored in the Stanley Cup final or sorry. 14% of the goals Alec Martinez ever scored in his playoff career won the cup. But he obviously didn't win the cup with that. It was Riley Smith. So imagine being Dale Talon today. Mm -hmm. Riley Smith scores the Stanley Cup winning goal and Jonathan Marcheseau gets the Conn Smythe trophy. That, that story is resurfacing. Yep. And like, listen... Some teams have done really, really poorly in the expansion draft uh, with Vegas and with Seattle. Toronto, I think, is one of the rare teams to do worse in the Seattle one than the Vegas one. Do you remember who they even lost to Vegas? Uh, who Toronto? Uh, hold on. Uh, wasn't it Leipzig? It was Brendan Leipzig. Yeah. And you were upset about it. I was. He, he was, was so mad. <laughs> he was a good player. <laughs> Seemed like a good guy. Boy, were you wrong on Oops. both fronts. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but uh, March is so, like, I thought of him as this unknown quantity. Like, he was an underrated player, and the Panthers didn't really realize what they were giving up. He had 30 goals in his last season as a Panther. He had 30 goals. He had seven more goals than his closest teammate when Florida chose to expose him in the expansion draft. What? Uh, that's. I mean, so I read. Uh, I wanted to get into that, and I, I, I do want to get into that. I mean, now I guess because you know he has won the Conn Smythe. He had fun fact: zero goals in his first seven games in the playoffs. Can't believe. And then thirteen in the next fifteen. And I, Tim McAuliffe this morning on Sports Sportsnet was like, "Can you imagine if he played for a Canadian team?" I'm like, Canadian teams would have to make it past Game Seven of the playoffs. Uh, <laughs> like both teams barely did. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl did tie Marcia so for the playoff lead in goals, by the way, with 13. Truly stupid. Mm -hmm. But one of the deep dives that happened earlier this week that I think now really hits home is Shayna Goldman and her um, her article on it says Jonathan Marcia so's postseason a reminder of Florida's computer boys era. And now she interviews people who are associated with it. Uh, they talk about Marcia so being like a group six UFA. Uh, they gave him a shot. He had 30 goals and 51 points in his first regular NHL role with the with the Panthers. Uh, and then they let him go for basically nothing just so they could get out from underneath of Riley Smith's contract. Now, this was not the computer boys. The computer boys wanted Riley Smith and signed under that extension. Marcia so they found him from, you know, he's 25 years old. They found him. The Florida Panthers, we, we talked about that bizarre saga. They operated spitefully against themselves. Yeah, because Dale Talon stepped aside. Here's, here's what people don't remember. So Dale Talon was with the team from 2010. Vinny Viola and the company that bought the Panthers um, 
inherited Dale Talon. They weren't happy with the results after a couple of years. So they moved. Yeah, they were up, bad. They kicked him upstairs to president and they brought in a guy named Tom Rowe who ended up being a terrible leader. But these computer guy, computer boy guys are the assistant general managers. Talon didn't like them very much, didn't like what they had to say. And they brought in a bunch of young players, including Riley Smith and Jonathan, Jonathan Marsh. So Jerry McCann and Huberto and Barkoff were both severely injured that year, along with Tom Rowe being a bad uh, general manager. So they got rid of Tom Rowe, brought Dale Talon back downstairs to general manager. And he basically spitefully tried to undo everything that they had done. His quote at the time, which is crazy, is we made a lot of bad decisions. Thank God I'm back, dude. Dude, like, listen, I, so I was thinking about this. I was like, everyone, everyone's dancing on his metaphorical grave here. Like, are we, are we going a bit over the top? And then I read that quote. Hmm. Nah, you that's know That's arrogance, man. That's yeah, arrogance. D- like, listen, dudes are wrong every day. Oh yeah. Dude, dudes make mistakes and they, they make predictions and they make, you know, whatever. Yeah. And they're wrong. It's when you're a dick about it. Well, and you <laughs> he had, was a dick. About he it. had nothing to back it up either. It was just his from the gut. Like the computer boys had data and analytics, which is something we all believe in. The Blackhawks melted his brain permanently. I, I think I think he took full full credit for the Blackhawks. Uh, he asked them. He called them and asked them for a ring, supposedly. Whoa. And it's like, bro, you don't work here anymore. Like, do you Ew. know how many how many GMs like how many people like should Mark Andre Fleury call and ask the Vegas Golden Knights for a ring? Right. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, you would never expect a player to do that. And, you know, oh, well, the GM has a different role than the players. They brought in the players. And, okay, well, you could argue that a a fired coach or uh, a a traded player had an effect on the locker. Like, what are we doing here? Either you work there or you don't. Um, he also Dale Talon also traded some a young player named Jared McCann mm. uh, and Nick Bukestad, who he had made sure that he um, Protect. protected yep. in twenty in twenty seventeen for the for the thing for Riley Sheehan and Derek Broussard and draft picks. Maron. like terrible. Uh, and and so anyway, there's a lot to this article, but we highly recommend you check it out because it is fascinating. Um, Dale Talon right now is actually working for senior senior advisor for the Canucks. Oh, well, that makes sense. You bet he is. I think that. I mean, I think that's a perfect organization for him. Yeah. What? <laughs> sorry. Why is that, Adam? What team is the worst they, situation in the entire league? They operate like he does. Terrible, <sighs> dude. I mean, listen. Here's the thing. Here, the, like, I'd love to. I, I would love to do a deep dive on Vancouver, starting with the guy that they traded a first round pick for, Philip Ronick. Who they still have not signed to an extension. Have they not? I don't believe so. Well, they can't. Why? They're over the cap for next year already. Oh. <laughs> not at <laughs> risk of going over the cap. <laughs> over the oh cap. Oh my god. They're they're fucking terrible, man. I don't I don't know if it's a direct reflection of the management group there. Yeah, he's he's expired after no, he's got four point four million for one more year and then he's got to do an extension. That's part of the reason you gotta take their back half, the strong back half. They did that, they've done that two I know, in a row. I know Eat but, shit with your strong back I half. I know, but you gotta Put take a strong it, season together. You gotta take it with a couple grains of salt then. One, they've already done this. Number two, they <laughs> cannot add. <laughs> they not only can they not add, they have to subtract. And they can't and they're not gonna draft in the first round this year. Are they not? I don't think so. And this is, this is, oh my God. Vancouver stinks, man. Like they're, Dude. yeah, no, no, they do have a first rounder. They traded their other, no second rounder, two thirds and three fourths, but like, okay, cool. Anyway, sorry. We're making, um, this. when it, when it comes to Dale Talon, yeah, he's done some good things. He's done some very smart things. It's been a long do time. Think, do you think calling Chicago for a ring was one of them? Well, it's been a long time since, uh, most of those smart things. Wouldn't you say his recent track record has been so pretty this what, ass. This is what we were talking about with Mike Babcock. It's what we're talking about with Yarmo. It's what we're talking about with, you know, Torts was another guy where, you know, the Leafs, you, Leafs were kings of this. Hey, Ron Wilson, you had a great run in San Jose half a decade ago. Uh, come, come do the Leafs. Oh, they were, uh, they were a coach graveyard for yeah. a while. Randy Carlisle, you had, you won a cup six years ago. Let, like we got to like, what are you doing for me lately? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I beat you to it. <laughs> Man, it's, 
<laughs> Manscaped has a full package for your package this summer. Uh, the Performance Package 4.0. It checks every box, and it's the five-star tool. But it doesn't check your box. No nicks. That's right. Hey, is that, is I, that, see, that I see what he did I there. Know. I don't think so. But listen, let's kick it off with I the like lawnmower. It does it better? Four point <laughs> trimmer. It's a confidence thing, you know. <laughs> the trimmer gets you clean, and as Jesse said, no nicks. Um, there's also the weed whacker. This is a nose and ear hair trimmer, and if you hit thirty five and you're like me, you now have ear hair. Why? I don't know. I'm not sure what we needed that for at thirty five, but here we are. And uh, also, you can uh, d. Hair your nostrils with the Weed Whacker 2.0, like I just said. And uh, there's also the Crop Preserver, which is the anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. The Crop Reviver, it's a spray-on toner for those really clean balls. Yeah. So you can hit it out of the park. Oh, because balls. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But gently. Yeah. So if you... (laughs) Gently. Very gently. If you want to be the MVP of clean and trim... Uh, go to uh, manscaped.com. Use that promo code Danglitz for 20% off and free shipping. Manscaped.com. Again, it's 20% off free shipping with the promo code Dangle, D-A-N-G-L-E, at manscaped.com. Get into the action all summer long. Listen to that. Summer. Woo! The season's over. The, the NHL season's over. The NBA season's over. But there's still lots happening at Sports Interaction, including we got the draft coming up. We got free agency coming up for both of those sports, plus tennis, golf, whatever it is you're into, baseball, all happening right now at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. You can bet on those things. You can bet on free agency and draft. Exactly. And we're going to actually have to throw a bunch of props up in the Dangles Doozy section as well. Um, and I'll remember, everything's uh, you can do before games, live and play all summer long. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN or download the app to get started. It's 19 plus. Please play responsibly. Now, one thing I do want to talk about very quickly, guys. Moving off of the computer boys who deserve their credit and are all still working in the NHL, as far as I know. A couple for Columbus, one for Toronto, and one Carolina, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, Let's talk about Jack Eichel. Mm -hmm. Oh! Let's talk about playoff leading scorer Jack Eichel. Unbelievable. Now, a couple seasons ago, at the start of the season, um, the Buffalo Sabres made a trade that ultimately helped both sides. I don't think anybody can argue that Alex Tuck was a valuable piece for the Sabres. He's been a valuable piece in their turnaround. But again, the Sabres haven't made the playoffs still. No, as trades, as or, trading your franchise center could go, I'd say that trade went pretty well. Yeah, it's a pretty even one. As as those trades go. I don't know. I don't know if I would call it even after this. I don't know if I'd call it even. But, you know, as far as trading a star player, you're right. But I got to say... Is that not a gigantic fuck you to Kevin Adams and the medical staff in Buffalo? Because here's what here's what Kevin Adams had. He had a star player who the previous general manager was upset to get. <laughs> right? No, the, sh- the previous, previous. Previous, previous. Because it had been two. It was Botterill before. Botterill then- was unsuccessful for like five minutes. And they're like, get out. And then, yeah, it was Tim Murray before that. <laughs> So they, you, you can't succeed with the Buffalo Sabres? What are you, a dumbass? And get so out. I'm going to put you in Kevin Adams' seat for a second. You're Kevin Adams, and you have this star player who's extremely injured. The neck is a problem. Your team doctors are coming to you and saying, uh, we don't think you should get that surgery. It's too risky. Uh, we want him to do this. And Jack Eichel's like, I'm not going to play for you if, I, if I'm doing it their way. So you have the choice to keep your doctors or keep Jack Eichel. Now, and the it, Buffalo Sabres chose to keep their doctors. So I hope that they're enjoying life on the outside of the playoffs while one of the best players that's ever played for them Jeez. just won a cup and won the playoff scoring race. You're, I'm sorry. So, you know, that somebody's got to say it. No, man. to be fair the to Buffalo. The Jack Eichel took from Buffalo Sabres fans, fuck that, man. Jack Eichel is a winner, man. He's a winner. Everybody called him a loser, never been to the playoffs, whatever. Jack Eichel is a big-time fucking player. We just saw it. Finally, because he had a team around him to do it. Mm-hmm. Good for him. And you know what? I, I think Buffalo is going to be very, very good. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Very good. But to, <laughs> Jack Eichel won. To be fair to Buffalo, Jack Eichel's first trade request came before his back problems. Okay. Neck. N- sorry, neck. Right. And there were other problems, Sitting next like the me. state of the team. I mean, d- and Jack Eichel's not the first star player to want the hell uh, off of that team right you know the ryan o'reilly stuff is is crazy but i i think people sometimes forget what was at stake um when it comes to jack eichel 
They were going to have to cut him open once every decade if he got the neck fusion surgery. Sure. That's, that's how it works. Yeah. Supposedly. Um, while a hockey player had never gotten the disc replacement surgery that he ended up getting, other athletes had mm-hmm. to great success. And it is strange to me that one team would let him get it and another wouldn't because the risk to the Sabres was just as great as the risk to the Golden Knights. Um, You could argue it was greater. Imagine that surgery goes as bad as the Sabres feared uh, it could have. And then you gave up Alex Tuck and Peyton Krebs and I think it was a first and a second. And a second for a player who's never going to play for you. Jesse, can you read the whole thing? Yeah, it was Jack Eichel and a third round pick were sent to Vegas in exchange for Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, a first round pick last year, which turned into Noah Oslin, Mm -hmm. and then a 2023, so this upcoming draft, second round pick. Jeez. That's a big haul for Buffalo, and they're on the upswing now. And I look at the trade and I say both sides are going to come out on the plus. Which sure. is all you can hope for a trade, but it's unfortunate that I had to reach that area, be- that uh, point for the Sabres because the team they have now is is a really good young team. And if Jack Eichel was a part of that, um, it'd be a completely different outlook on Buffalo. Like we were talking to them in different contexts, but I don't think the future was ever there, you know, with the amount of money he's going to, he, is is making now ten million dollars and and having you know the stars you have now and Tage Thompson like Jack Eichel maybe just taking up too much. They room. they sure could use a center though. Well, the Sabers that's one of their weaknesses. Well, they. Uh, I mean, I think I think Jesse, you might be right, but I think the the extension they gave Jeff Skinner is the reason Jack Eichel's salary couldn't fit. Well, I mean that that and they just didn't. Dude, they didn't have talent. Yeah. That's they also, the long they didn't have talent upstairs, which is your brain, right? No, the that's GM true. talent. They had no GM talent. I um, just think, man, listen, I'm happy for Buffalo's success. This is not taking away from Buffalo. This is squarely on Kevin Adams and the medical staff. You guys could have kept this guy, and all you had to do was try this surgery out. Give it a shot. And look at what happened. Now, maybe... That's, guys, what, that's why the relationship broke down. Maybe the guys they got... Uh, I think it was... I think it was the anvil that broke the camel's back. Yeah. Um, what if what if this did work out for both teams, but mm-hmm. Eichel also won the cup? You know what I mean? And another trade uh, with connection to this cup final that the Sabres actually did pretty well with was Sam Reinhardt. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. First round pick, and they pried Devin Levi out of Florida. Oh, and Florida oh. knew what they had. I know. Yeah, but they, know. Florida was also in a situation where they were a goalie factory because they had. Yeah. They signed Bobrovsky to all the money, and then they had uh, Spencer Knight knocking on the doorstep, and then they also had Devin Levi, and they're like, "Fuck, that, we got to go get something for this because we have too many goalies." But, and then Alice Lyon comes out of nowhere and is like, "I'm old, but I'm amazing." All the time. <laughs> <laughs> but here's my point in this: oh, is not to take a run at 30. what the Sabers have done since Eichel. My point is, you had a star player and you could have kept him, but you got to keep your doctors instead. And I think that's that's the point. And if Vegas has taught us anything, and I'm going to quote Kevin Papetti, he's like, here's the lesson. If there's a star, go after him. Go get him. Oh, yeah. And then if you have a star and you got to move him out to go get the other star, just move trade him, him. Trade him to star. Carolina for free. And, you know, <laughs> they moved on from Pacioretty and who else did they move on? Like Flurry. Flurry and for so many. Free. Other- for free. Yeah, they free. just gave him away. Nate Schmidt like, was in there as well. He was on the up and up yeah. in Vegas. Now. Not a star, but still a very good player. Now, Vegas was in a unique situation, though. And I don't know if you can replicate what they've done exactly. No. Because you, you know what makes it easier to ditch good players for free mm-hmm. is having an unbelievable amount of assets because, listen, uh, it. It's not the Vegas Golden Knights' fault Mm -hmm. that every team six years ago decided to get fleeced. Nearly every team. Get robbed. Robbed. It also didn't look like that at the time. No, No, it it didn't. didn't. No one saw William Carlson scoring 40 goals. No, no one saw what Chandler Stevenson was going to be. No, it was like, oh, cool. You got a second round pick three years from now and like 84th round picks. Who gives a shit? Yeah, and all these guys, there's retreads from these teams and... And oh look, they traded Nick Suzuki. What a dumbass! And, yeah, you know, um, but they 
were uniquely set up in terms of assets because of the expansion draft and also key. Oh man, this Vegas team, they're so deep. They're so deep. You know, part of the reason they look so deep is because they didn't have to expose anybody to Seattle yep. in the next expansion draft. And I got to say, you know, I don't love the salary cap. Alan Walsh loves to talk about the triple hard salary cap. We got an episode coming out. Triple tomorrow. hard cap. The triple hard cap. T-shirts coming soon. Yeah, I got to right. say, I got to say, though, actually. Yeah. Oh, nice. I got to say <laughs> for the fact that it's a triple hard cap. Gosh, it seems malleable. The Vegas Golden Knights. No one massages that thing like the Vegas Golden Knights, oh, yeah. dude. Maybe even better than Tampa. There's a reason they acquired Shea Weber <laughs> and then traded him. <laughs> Remember last year? Last Where does he even play now? That's or, crazy. Well, uh, where he's, does his he's contract an, exist? He's an Arizona Coyote, I oh, believe. Oh, cool. Good for him. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Didn't he? He took the ice for the Golden Knights, and he had, like, gloves and stuff. He, he was at, like, a practice. He was at your favorite place in the world, Henderson. Uh, oh, with the Silver Knights. With the Silver Knights, and he was on the ice, and then some of the executives, this I believe this story's out there, but some of the executives made a call to the league being like, you have to go check in. You have to do one of those medical check-ins on Shea Weber so we can make sure that he's actually injured and can't play. They would have had Kyle oh. Dubas stuffed in a trunk for that. Yeah, yeah because they, <laughs> the executives around the league have been getting tighter with the LTIR stuff and checking in to see if players are actually eligible, and when they saw Shea Weber out there with the Henderson Golden, the Silver Knights, they, they made the call, and they're like, okay, go Go in and do a check so you actually can't play. I mean, there's been <laughs> some shady business. Like yeah. I brought it up last show. Mike Smith, regular season, Stanley Cup playoffs, 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 playoffs. I can't play anymore. Not um, I retire. <laughs> I can't play anymore. I don't know what the move would have been, guys. But in 2019, the Calgary Flames made a real push and almost had Don Maloney uh, went on Sportsnet and, and almost said it was done. They had a deal in place for Mark Stone. When the, Mark, the Flames, the Flames did. Didn't they almost have a deal for Eichel as well? They did. Ooh. Wait, the, the the Flames had a deal to get him from Ottawa or from Vegas? From Ottawa. Oh wow! In 2019, and, and Vegas oh, was Vegas the one that ended up winning. Up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, Vegas. No, if, if they had a deal from Vegas, it would be free. Here you go. Dude, <laughs> two two back surgeries in nine months, and he scores a hat trick. Yep. Do you, you know, want to do the stat? Well, do you know the stat off the top of your head? Let's see. Well, it's either the first hat trick in a cup final game or the first hat trick in a Stanley Cup clinching game. First hat trick in a Stanley Cup clinch, Stanley Cup clinching game in how many years? 101. Who scored the last one? Fucking Leviticus Cornwall. <laughs> no, no. Babe die. Babe die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Toronto Maple Leaf great, right? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Toronto St. Pat great, actually. Yes. Uh, you know, because we gotta get specific. Anyway, long story short, I think there's <laughs> there's so much about Vegas winning that is is unbelievable. And I that's why I asked you last episode to get to these finals, what can you replicate? And I think I think you know, you guys kind of hit the nail on the head there. It's difficult to replicate an expansion draft where a bunch of uncreative GMs can't see the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. The one thing I'll say about the Leafs at that expansion draft, I'm, I was completely at the time and still am against what they did in the Seattle expansion. Yeah. But the uh, the expansion that they did back then, first off, they weren't that good, so there weren't that many players to protect. And a lot of the players were on ELCs, so you didn't have to protect Matthews, Marner, Nylander. There were a lot of uh, eligible guys, yeah. But they kind of stuck. They or were st stick handling their way around that. It was like a nothing pickup for Vegas, and it turned out to be really, really great. It was a decent time to be in a rebuild, actually. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's if you look at just the players who were important on the ice last night for uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, you realize that like there's an there's a willingness to acquire guys and then move on from them and acquire new guys at any rate where they think okay these players are going to uh, change our franchise and put them in the right direction to win. You know, they're they're willing to move off of guys so quickly. And it's it's a negative if you is coming from the player standpoint of like, hey, we want to stick around here for a long time. But if you're just strictly building a team from a cold hearted perspective in that we want to win the Stanley Cup, the way they operate is the correct way. Yes. And, you know, we I 
constantly compare the NBA to, to the NHL and the NHL to the NBA. We talk about uh, Masai Ujiri's willingness to trade DeMar DeRozan. You know what move often gets pushed to the wayside? And I think it's a better comparable for what the Golden Knights did to Marc-Andre Fleury. The Raptors gassing Dwayne Casey. Mm-hmm. Coach of the year. Yeah. You know, he wins it after year, being fired. Wins it and then takes the most miserable picture of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing was, he beat the Raptors, I think, every time they went to Detroit, Detroit right? Detroit yes. has Detroit's been one of the worst basketball teams in the last few years, and they have an unreal record versus the Raptors. We could win four <laughs> games all season as long as it's the four <laughs> against the fucking Raptors. Yeah. But like you look at the important pieces, and they got Chandler Stevenson for a fifth round pick from uh the Washington Capitals. Oh my god. And like they the move to get rid of Nate Schmidt just to dump the contract, and then you see uh th- where oh, they just always call Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, they, they give him to Vancouver. It's five point nine million dollars, and all they get back is Elias Pettersson. Well, if Talon's there, call. Wait, what? The other one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was I like, I don't remember two. that in trade trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And then you got you remember the the Donoff situation where they move him for Shea Weber's contract. They had just acquired the Donoff last off season. Yeah, you know, and then a well, year they later, they tried to trade him, and then and they try so they acquire him, him in the off season of 2021 for Ryan Reeves, who was a Vegas Golden Knight at the time. He was very uh, famous, very one. popular. Yeah. yeah, and then so they they move him. Uh, at the same, they move Ryan Reeves and they uh, they actually acquired Dodonna for uh, Nick Holden. My bad. And then they trade him uh, less than a year later in the Shea Weber deal. And then they move Shea Weber's contract again to the Coyotes. And they want the cap space. Speaking of Coyotes. Oh, wait, no. He was a former Coyotes goalie, but they got him from the Sharks. Aiden Hill. Aiden Hill was a fourth round pick last offseason. They uh, made wow. the trade with the Sharks. Fourth round pick next year. Yeah, 2024 fourth round pick. Wow. And then Barbashev in in the big Zach Dean Barbashev swap. Oh, big swap. That (laughs) that dude's so important to this fucking franchise and their Stanley Cup victory. Petro with his second cup last night, but Barbashev too? (laughs) Barbashev too, yeah. Barbashev too, baby? Phil got three. What was that deal? Oh, it was Zach Dean. Zach Dean, yeah. He was a former first, I think. Mm -hmm. And they don't care about having a first round pick. Man. And then you think about you go out and you make the Jonathan Quick trade yeah. just to have some uh, support for your five goaltenders that are running. <laughs> you know, I I've told the story uh, a few times, but I always like repeating it when he does well. I met Ivan Barbashev at the 2014 draft in Philly, and he walked up to me because he's like, "Oh, I watched your KHL stuff." Oh yeah, yeah. Oh sick. And uh, you know, oh yeah, you do videos with Andre and. Uh, I said, so who's picking you? And this was day one of the draft, uh, the evening before uh, the draft began. He's like, I think St. Louis. St. Louis liked me. <laughs> and I've never heard this story. No, I, so, but here's the crazy thing St. Louis first round pick comes up. It's like 21st, 22nd overall or something. And with that pick, the St. Louis Blues select Robbie Fabry. Wow. And so I go, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I wonder where Barbashev's going now. Saint, the second round comes around. No one picks him in the first. He's snubbed with their second round pick. The St. Louis Blues select Ivan Barbashev. There it is. And they won a cup with him. And then they got a former second round or first round pick for him. And he gets his second Stanley Cup. I'd, I'd say the relationship between the Blues and Barbashev went pretty well. I think so. Yeah, Zach Dean was uh, 30th overall. 30th. Oh, okay. Vegas so late selected first. him in uh, 2021. They and, hate first round picks. Oh, yeah. Cannot stand them. None of them can play for them, and it's working. And then, like, from the on ice perspective, they were so shaky to start the game. Like, I don't know, I don't know if you well, guys saw the, the intermission panel, but they were just ripping them for the start for the first five minutes. And so, uh, but then I was like, the period ended 2 nothing. you guys. So I had a <laughs> thought on that, and it's a bit of a stick in the mud thought. Okay. <laughs> so before the game, the, all the players were caught off guard yes. by the fact that they were starting the Misfits. So they started the original Golden Knights. They don't play together, though. Mm-mm. So while it got the building going, and maybe that helped them throughout the course of the game, it was pretty obvious through the first few minutes that they were a little messed up. Like maybe, they were a little out of sorts. Maybe that's not the time to do that. 
it it <laughs> literally okay while it's cute <laughs> it's cute and everything but it literally screws up the first yep. shift for everybody yeah it no your entire lineup <laughs> is out of whack for and the so no wonder they look bad for the first five minutes. Yeah. It was it, like nine turnovers in the first oh, four minutes yeah. of the game or something crazy. But, you know, get Aiden Hill to make one save. Yeah. And like, that's about the loudest I've ever heard any building ever. Mm -hmm. And it was insane. I, I very rarely am sitting on my couch. I love sitting on my couch. And I'm very rarely sitting on my couch going, damn, I wish I was in that loud building full of people. Damn, I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. I really wish I was in Vegas last night, man. Um, the party it must have been. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought the building was gonna fall down. Like, I saw, I saw just some of the videos. Like more of them will come out today, but I saw like a couple of Jack Eichel in the club with the Stanley Cup, oh. standing on a bunch of tables. And yeah. you know, I want to see that bar tab. Those Vegas nightclubs, like. Those are some of the best nightclubs in the world. And you get a bunch of hockey players who just won the Stanley Cup in there. It's going to be unreal. The Raptors flew to Vegas on their way from Golden State. Do you remember that? Yeah, I love oh, They flew Air Drake. They they stop off in <laughs> Vegas on the way back to Toronto. And they have the time of their lives, you know? Like oh. So I can only imagine these guys who are local to the area because that's where they play and, and the amount of partying they did. And one thing I just want to get in there before we move too far off sure. from the on-ice stuff. Um, one of, I think the most one of the most important important things on, uh, from uh, the Vegas Golden Knights perspective on why they won the Stanley Cup is Aiden Hill, number one. And two, the Florida Panthers didn't score a single power play goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs, in the Stanley Cup final. Oh, I was like, what? In the Stanley Cup final versus Vegas, they were 0 for on the power play. Yeah. They had chances. Ugly. Like, well, and, and, and let's, let's throw this in there, Jesse, to back that point up. Yeah. They were also, they ran out of magic. Bobrovsky had a 7-3-3 save percentage. They gave up a lot of good chances. In they gave up a lot of good chances the yeah. entire playoffs. Yeah, it was Bobrovsky yeah. that got them there. Yeah, you're right. I mean, like, you're let's be right. honest. Let's call let's call it what it is. They right. were outplayed in every fucking game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, every wrong. game. And, like, they do, quote, let the game come to them. Yeah. I I do think uh, Kachuk being messed up. Oh, probably contributed to. No, absolutely. Because that's a guy who knows how to be a timely goal scorer. It's like, OK, but Rossi's standing on his head and we just need one. And Kachuk finds a way to get those goals. And for Florida, like they they give up a lot defensively to score goals. Like yeah. they don't they don't care to have um, it's F3, the third forward come in and protect the and protect the pass going the other end. Like they don't care about that. They're all about, hey, let's do everything we can to flip the puck out, try and get a goal on this play and we'll worry about the other end if it comes down to that, you know? And right. in Vegas, they play such great structured hockey uh, because their head coach is fantastic. They're and so fast. And they're, they're so fast, but also big. They're they can play every kind of hockey. They're nothing like the uh, yesterday on the game over stream. Like I didn't mean any disrespect to the 2019 Blues. Um, they're not the same. They're not. The, I, I think the I think this year's Golden Knights mop them. Um, but the well, first of all, you would have to clone two players, so, <laughs> so that that's a bit of difficulty there. But um, the big punishing plotting style that that Blues team played. This Vegas team is so much faster, so much more skilled, and will just fuck you up. Like their their fourth line is what fourth lines should be. Like Keegan Colasar was so good. Yeah, a uh, couple of bad penalties here and there. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. His penalty was really stupid, but like so was Ekblad's. Yep. Know? Yep. Um, and like, but like that guy's probably going to be in their top six. Yep. Eventually. Yep. You know what I mean? Like maybe the one he's a first round pick, isn't he? I think he's the only first round pick they've ever kept. <laughs> <laughs> I, Might be. Shit. And uh Berkshire, Andrew Berkshire sent me a text. Guess how many of their players in the playoffs were drafted as Golden Knights? How Are many you counting Knights? the expansion draft? No. no okay. Drafted in the NHL draft. On the team. Right on now. the I team. Think there's three in it? these playoffs. Two, one. <laughs> Who's that? Nick Hague. Oh, okay. That's oh, it. they acquired oh. the other ways. The only guy. Yeah, no expansion draft. Yeah, no, a bunch of them. Okay, and now, the NHL draft one. Something that'll stick in Leaf fans' craw a little bit is that Dubas apparently wanted to get O'Reilly, uh, Achari, and Barbashev at the trade deadline, and they just 
couldn't make the Barbashev thing move, work. C- wasn't it Kerfoot? They, they would, didn't I, want to give up Kerfoot? I think that might have been what it was. I'm going to, I'm just. I want to confirm that with era. CJ. I know that they didn't want to give up Kerfoot at the deadline. I just don't know if it had to do with that deal. Um, the other thing is Tom Parashka, former guest on this show. Uh, if you remember General Fanager, uh, this was the site that predated Cap Friendly. And they were, it was a fantastic website way ahead of its time. And Tom was so good at uh, doing Capology that the Vegas Golden Knights said, why don't you come work for us? And he's, he's been there ever since. He's been there since before they played their first game. Amazing. I, I looked at his staff oh, directory yeah. on um, Elite Prospects because they do staff. And it says 16, 17. I go, 16, 17. They weren't even around. <laughs> oh, but they existed doing research and stuff. They just hadn't played a game yet. And he got promoted. Uh, this past season, he's now he was just listed as analyst, but I think now he's director of hockey ops or something. Oh, wow. And this dude, if I'm not mistaken, uh, built general manager because he wanted to teach himself how to code. <laughs> wow. Which no. is why I said, I don't remember if this was on the air or off the air on Game Over. I was like, if Jesse set his mind to I want to win a Stanley Cup ring, I think you'd do it within the decade. Jesse Blake? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you could. I genuinely do. I actually do you not? Could. Yeah, you for sure could. I couldn't do it in a NHL 23, so no, I don't know if you I think you could. could. No, well, that's because you're a dumbass. But like I I, <laughs> I could but you're determined. I couldn't make the virtual characters do it in, no. in the game. If I think so, if you no I don't know. If you raise the stakes, you're one of those players who does better in the show than the miners. Like I ah. no, no. <laughs> If you gave Jesse a decade, forget Bill Foley. You know what? I say three years playoffs, oh, decade yeah? cup. No, I'll t- I'm going to take another <laughs> run at it. I'm going to take another run at it uh, this summer with the with the NHL 23. See if I can finally get a ring. Arizona, uh, ring, ring, <laughs> <laughs> ring, uh, ring. These playoffs. So with Vegas winning the Stanley Cup, you look back at all the series they they played. Like, did they play a really competitive series? Who is this? Vegas? No. They <laughs> Edmund, oh, Vegas. Edmonton was close for the first like that was four com- Winnipeg was close. That was com- Winnipeg was not as four one. No, they killed they, the- I think Winnipeg played better against Vegas than Florida did. Game one. Ooh. Game one. Do you remember they opened the playoffs and Winnipeg smoked Vegas? Yeah. And then uh this is what I'm saying. Vegas, Vegas Vegas won four straight games. That's what I'm saying. I'm giving <laughs> listen, this is a low bar. Vegas kind of steamrolled everybody, but I think I think Winnipeg, Winnipeg was their more competitive. And and it's funny because they uh, uh Rick Bonus basically put all those players on blast, and rightfully so. That last game yep. was absolutely pathetic. Yep. Um do you, I was I was listening to CJ and Julian talk about it earlier this week. Like, do you feel better in retrospect now, having seen the way Vegas played against other teams? And I was like, fucking no. Uh, for Winnipeg, you don't feel better. Oh, with Winnipeg, no. that means you had a chance to like. Are you kidding me? You played them better than the Stanley Cup final. Then you should have beat them. You they also beat them. looked like they no looked like Winnipeg Jets fan I spoke to was like, yeah, but they gave it their all. <laughs> <laughs> They were like, oh, what a, this lazy bunch of assholes. That's so funny. You know, the one thing you can say about Florida is they did give it their all. They just ran out of gas. Man. Exactly. Yeah. No Florida yeah. Panthers team is like, if they had just tried harder. No. Florida's no. try meter is at a thousand percent. Um, and this is where maybe too too high, <laughs> right? Like you're you have a broken body. And this is where it's frustrating because um uh uh you you compare and contrast and you make You make this about your particular team if they didn't make it. The one thing that everybody respects and loves is a team that tries like the Florida Panthers. Mm -hmm. Like, holy shit. They won it more than you. It was an easy team to respect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I want to make it about the Leafs. Are you guys ready? Uh, Are you moving on from the playoffs? No. Okay. I'm just making it about the Leafs. Okay. Because it has to be. I do want to say I I want to see the gold saved above expected stats because (laughs) heading into the series... Vegas made every goalie that they played look like shit, mm-hmm. except for Jack Campbell for some reason. Um, I want to see what they did to Sergei Bobrovsky because they brought a save percentage on the playoffs down to 915. And I'm pretty sure he was at like a 1090. <laughs> the last, <laughs> Something stupid. The last competitive series we got was really Dallas-Seattle. That was a great series. That was rounds, really good rounds series. three and four weren't the best. It yeah, there was some entertaining hockey, but there were a lot of ass kickings this year. Yeah, I uh, 
Uh, I just want to say, uh, this is how we make it about the Leafs. This is Greta Van Leafs on Twitter. 2019, Boston beat the Leafs, lose in the finals. 2021, Montreal beats the Leafs, loses in the finals. 2022, Tampa Bay beats the Leafs, loses in the finals. 2023, Florida beats the Leafs, loses in the finals. The curse is real. Now, so learn your lesson. I want it. Don't don't beat the Leafs. Lou, just stop losing. Stop Give losing. it to us. <laughs> you wouldn't want to lose like that, would you, in the finals? I Drop would- the money in the bag. <laughs> I've always wondered, and I've I've always it's this sort of a backwards ideology because I was talking to some people about it, and I was like, okay, what would you what would you rather see when the, when when Florida just shit kicked the Leafs? Would you prefer that Florida goes on and has in, incredible success, or would you prefer they get their asses handed to them in the next round? And my answer is always, if they beat me, I want them to win the cup because at least the cup winning team beat me, right? Nope. Now, as you see with the Leafs, that's not possible. But I feel like I feel like. The Leafs cannot feel good about their second round series, but I do feel a half of 1% better. No. Now knowing that they came in and shit kick Carolina the way they did. No, I I do feel better. It it makes you, it makes you complacent, you know, because then you're like, oh, we, we got beat by a really good team. We're right there, you know, and it makes you sit back and be, and pat yourself on the back for losing. They are complacent though. The Leafs are complacent. Yeah, and I don't like it. One team in the league gets to feel an ounce of that. Yeah. Because it, they're the only team in the league where they're actually right. Edmonton. Edmonton. Oh, so you're going to say the Stanley Cup winner. <laughs> well, no. The, well, because the Stanley Cup winner won. Yeah. So they don't need to be like, well, at least we won. <laughs> the only one who should be happy <laughs> no but the only team that i'm not saying you're happy about oh we lost to vegas and gave it a good shot but you you feel somewhat confident that you gave them a run for their money i i, I think out of all the teams in these playoffs that applies to the oilers mm-hmm. the most mm. i was saying this on game over like the 2019 bruins drove me nuts uh but I was more mad about how the Leafs just completely folded after I thought being the better team for most of the series. Um, the Habs, I obviously didn't want them to win in 2021, but <laughs> not because I hated them, because I... Can you imagine? We already have to live down the blowing the 3-1 lead. We'd never hear the end of it. We'd have to all pick different sports, right? Yeah. <laughs> T- we would. Yeah. Tampa would have been awful in yeah, 2022. Been um, I w- I wanted Colorado to win because of Drew, mm-hmm. um, but that's about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this year with Florida, man, I hated them. Hmm. After which is the biggest compliment I can pay them. Like there was a there was a genuine I do not want you to succeed dislike with them that I didn't even have for the Bruins back in the day. I just did not uh, th- that they should take the leaf logo out of the dressing room and just replace it with that photo of Radko Kudis yelling at Joseph Wall. That would make me angry every day. Mm-hmm. That I photo t- makes me angry every time I see it. I would take down every fucking photo, every black and white photo of uh, the Matthew uh, Nice hit. Mm. I would yeah, just it on Nice. I would literally just replace everything in the building, take down all the old photos of the cups, and just yeah, here's Bennett mushing your rookie and you doing fucking nothing. Here's Travis connecting you going after Austin Matthews and the oldest active skater in the league. Uh, has to come to his defense. Here's uh, Radko Gudis screaming in your rookie goalie's face. Here's, oh, like, I don't want it to be about we did it once, we can do it again. I I want this team to be powered a little bit, a little bit, for the love of God, mm-hmm. by hate. <laughs> it would be nice, wouldn't it? It's been so long. I don't even I know what just, that's like. I think part of the reason Leaf fans get so mad at the Leafs is the Leafs. The, the fans are madder than the team. Hmm. They're di- listen when they lose, they're disappointed. They're disappointed. <laughs> I say, ah, oh, that shucks. That's not aw oh, shucks, but like, oh man, like no, like I want to. I I wouldn't mind seeing a you know a couple bits of drywall in Scotiabank Arena with holes in it. Like I wouldn't like let's you know what. 
Maybe we shouldn't be wagging our finger at Michael Bunting. Maybe we need to double down on it and get five of them. Just get a just get a bunch of nut jobs, and you have the stars. If you only have one nut job, the refs can target them. But if you got five or six of them, you can't. They're, what you can't control them all. The you, you sit. They they simply will not. There was the the Florida nut jobs. And they <laughs> throw Sam Bennett and Nick Cousins and Radko Gudis yeah. and they just did Matthew Kachuk and they just keep throwing them over the boards wave after wave and Vegas did that too. Oh yeah, they Vegas got their nut jobs too. Mm-hmm. It's Alex Petrangelo. <laughs> they also had the nut job and Chief Ryan Reeves teach them how. Oh, yeah. sometimes <laughs> you have to have a professor come in and and isn't that and, interesting? And teach the team how to be a little bit crazy. Isn't it interesting though? So I agree with that. But you know that saying like, uh, oh, you get a tough guy out there, you all play a little taller. Mm-hmm. Straighten your back up. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that after he left, they kept playing like that? It's a, it's not a personnel issue. It's a culture issue. You also have to have guys willing to do that. And and if we're comparing them to the Leafs, which, by the way, the Leafs should compare themselves to the Golden Knights because they won. Yeah. <laughs> you should compare yourself to the best. Uh, and I think the Leafs are among the best in the league, but in the playoffs, they're not. And so what do, what do you need to do? Well, you need to have guys who are willing to, to, to get in the, like, get in shit. And I think the thing is, is again, whenever we say this, people go, oh, they've dropped analytics. They don't like analytics anymore. No, I want some guys who are angry and also good. You is know that, what I want to see? Possible? Here's what I want to see out of the first game of the season. I want to see the Leafs outplay their opponent and have a line brawl. Oh, I like that. I don't care if all five of you get your ass kicked. <laughs> Show you're willing to fight. Just show it. Oh, oh, you know, what, what if he breaks his hand? At, I don't know. Regular season doesn't fucking matter anyway. Yeah. You're going to the playoffs. Get after it. No, you're not going to the playoffs. It's not a guarantee. It wasn't a guarantee for Florida. Right. I just, listen. The, and the, Vegas last year didn't even make the playoffs. The common denominator is you have to have an abundance of fuck you. And it's not a size thing. Braden Point is a little guy. Mm-hmm. He's just a little guy. Jonathan March is so. Isn't that hilarious mm-hmm. that Vegas had one player under six feet tall on their roster? And it's the guy who won the cons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as playoff MVP. It's almost like the giant roster that Vegas has makes room for Marsha to do his thing. Yeah. Room! It's all. What are you, who are you? Ken Reed? <laughs> <laughs> that room. Ken, Ken Reed loves talking about guys he, making room. He out screamed there. that in but my face so loud. He's not wrong, Steve. Oh, what? Actually, hang on, Steve. We're Jesse. We're gonna talk just quickly as if Steve. Steve, your bar. Your your muff, Steve. Okay. So Actual Jesse, earmuffs? I'm gonna ask Steve a question. Okay. And I think it's it, it's gonna trigger a response. Oh, okay. Are you comfortable working with me through the the triggered response by Steve? I do believe yes. that there is going to be a response. Yes. Steve, you can take your earmuffs off. Oh, okay. When inevitably a Toronto reporter asks the stars next uh, next season, at the start of next season, if they watch the playoffs this year, and one of them says no. Trade them immediately. Fourth round pick. Don't give a shit. Immediately. Off my fucking team. Off my fucking hockey team. Go away. Jesse. Hmm. Do you agree or disagree with Steve Dangle's take? I think you should. I think you should watch the sport. It's, you should become. You should. You should want to know how to be better, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, what medical student goes? You know, I'm not really big on lectures <laughs> or new research. <laughs> oh, what is that look? <laughs> I was pulling up a stat. I look over, and Steve's just hateful. <laughs> You got David Clarkson eyes right now, man. <laughs> hey, at least that guy was a fuck you guy, right? We gave him a lot of shit, but Dave Clarkson, he he had a lot of fuck you. Here's here's what's here's what's so anger inducing about that. Like, I understand it's the off season and you want time off and the season's a grind. I get it. It takes so little effort to watch hockey. Well, it's fun too, right? Just sit there and watch it. The fuck? Yep. Do you, do you like this or what? Oh, oh, Adam. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, All of it. Oh, fuck. I'm going to get tagged. I'm nope. going to get tagged every. You, I tell you what, 
I tell you what, I, I if want to leave and you get asked that question and you didn't lie. If you're a reporter and you don't ask that question, come on. Somebody in the scrums got asked. Follow up. Why not? There you go. Well, that's a good idea. Why not? Um, let's. Oh, I just like to relax. Jesse, did you have anything else you wanted to add to the Stanley Cup? Other than congratulations to Vegas and six long years they waited for this. Um, I hope they appreciate they, I how think special they it is. And by the way, congratulations to the Florida Panthers. A crazy end of the oh. season. What a story. And to be honest, uh, their first Stanley Cup finals victory as well, which I've, is great. That's true. I've never seen a coach more proud of his team in defeat than mm -hmm. Paul Maurice. Man, just 18 months ago, he was, he was having to coach the sad sack Winnipeg broken jets i can't believe what a what a glow up yeah what a glow up. like there's no way he could have been proud of that team <sighs> i mean rick well, bonus still is the next two guys weren't right so wow it's crazy it's crazy the difference and he's been to be on i mean we used to see paul maurice in in uh press conferences all the time with the leafs he's grown a lot too absolutely well you know how old is paul maurice you guys are on computers he because uh, he's got to be 50 because he started coaching at like 28. Well, this is the thing. He, he was came pretty in young. really 56. young. 56. 56. He was born in 67. Yep. <laughs> oh my God. To Dennis and Dolores Maurice of oh. Sault Ste. Marie. He's ah! Sault Ste. Marie. Bring him home. Oh, wait, no. He's going to Pittsburgh. He's going to Pitt. He's going sure. to Pittsburgh. Sorry. <laughs> my instincts kicked in. I got to adjust that. Uh, he did not play for Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. He played for this. Uh, or sorry, he. He was a um, he was a Spitfire, but that was when Windsor was sponsored by Compuware. So the Windsor Compuware Spitfires. That's right. Back in the day, um, he uh, he started coaching so young because he had a playing career, but he suffered an eye injury. Right. And uh, he's been yeah, I think he was a head coach in his twenties. Well, yeah. So yeah. he no. he played for the Windsor. CompuWare Spitfires as a defenseman in 87, 88, which would have been the season we were born. And then the next Holy year, shit. he became their assistant coach uh, and then was with them uh, for a bit and then went to Detroit and did, did the Junior Red Wings thing and then moved up to Hartford, I think, under or just after Pierre Maguire was there as the assistant. He became the head coach of the, the Hartford Wheelers in 95, 96. Wow. He has been coaching a long time. So his time. first season as a head coach was the first season of the Colorado Avalanche. That's right. That's how long he's been around. He has co ever since then, wow. he has coached exclusively NHL teams ex in, in, in except for two occasions. Number one, the Toronto Marlies. Yep. And number two. Oh, the San Diego Gulls? No. No. I don't. <gasps> oh, you know, you know, come on. Was it Metallurg Magnetogor? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 During the lockout. Yes, 2012, 2013, he was their coach. He that team was stacked too. They had uh they had Malkin, Kuhlman, and Sergey Mozakin was yeah. their top. And player. Sergey Mozakin is the I think the top leading scorer in KHL history, right? Uh I think he might be. No, they had they Hold had on, guys. I'm, I'm gonna run you through Gonchar? who they had. They had Moizakin, Malkin, Kuhlman, Gonchar, Zuccarello. Young Zuccarello. That's Zuccarello. Um, Cal O'Reilly. Ryan O'Reilly. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly? Yeah, for about 12 games. Uh, oh, wow. Oleg Tevardovsky. Wow. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any other names that I'm, I'm missing trying to remember here. remember their goalie. Uh, not Dmitry Timoshov. That's that's Nikolai Timoshov. Maybe they're related. Uh, and I, Ari uh, uh, Ahonen. Ari Ahonen, yeah. Yeah, right. and then Georgi Galishlevi. Oh, okay. So that was a fun team. Crazy. That was a fun time. I don't remember if they won or not. No, nope, out in the first round. Oh, damn. Yeah, that was a disappointment. Yeah. No, they, they were a really good team. Oh, you know why? They lost a bunch of their best players. <laughs> oh, to the NHL. So th this was the problem with uh, a lot of those KHL teams during the lockout is like a big chunk of them lost like their first line. Basically, the uh, Dynamo Moscow's top line was uh, uh, Nick Backstrom at center, mm -hmm. Alex Ovechkin on one of the wings, and Leo Komarov on the other. <laughs> wow. One of these things is not <laughs> like the other. And yeah, they lost the whole top line, but they ended up uh, winning the cup. Um, Gagarin Cup. This NHL season's over, which is 
Always today's a sad day because we, yeah, we don't get NHL hockey until October, which is sad, but we're getting plenty of stuff coming over the next month and so with free agency and all that fun stuff. But like when we look back on this season, I hope we gain some perspective on actually how dominant the <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights really were mm-hmm. just to kind of cap yeah. everything that we never looked at them that way because of all the East teams that kind of dominated the storylines and, and the news cycle. And we thought the East was so much stronger, but when we gain some perspective and we look back on the season, now that Vegas went through the playoffs and they dominated all the teams and they won the Stanley cup, they played in the division with the Edmonton Oilers, the Los Angeles Kings and the Seattle Kraken. Three of the teams that look the absolute best during these playoffs, they won that division. And they also won the Western conference during the regular season. They only lost seven road games all regular season, which is an, wow unreal thing to that's do in crazy National hockey that's league. crazy and you see the way they built their team with all of the injuries to their goaltenders and the amount of bodies that came through their lineup it was a really impressive season by them and i th- i hope that now that it's it's all over and they raise the cup that we look at this season and we say hey vegas dominated throughout the whole thing and we were wrong to just kind of not look at them and look at all the east teams i wonder i wonder how vegas is going to be whenever they get out of their money on the board era because there's so much revenge in that locker room yep uh and what's funny is they found ways to acquire guys to play well for them after the expansion draft who still have uh, just this lust for revenge this <laughs> blood lo- dude jack eichel mm-hmm. bruce cassidy as their coach uh, Marjusa wins the con Smythe. Like, should we be surprised? Mm-hmm. Riley Smith wins the con Smythe. Should we be surprised? Uh, Aiden Hill was a cast off. He was a cast off. He was traded for next to nothing. <laughs> like you, you go through the list. There's a Michael Amadio. There's a waiver claim. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of revenge on this team. It's a good thing for your locker room. It's again, I go back to. It's great to have a positive work culture, but in hockey, it's okay to have a couple grumpy guys. <laughs> it's maybe maybe when your team's a little grumpy, it's not the worst thing. And with the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's still going to be fascinating. We've mentioned it a couple of times. The news that comes out about de-emphasizing the core four, it's funny that those rumors come out from guys who just joined the organization and have an outside perspective on how things are run and allegedly allegedly and they might say hey there's some issues here allegedly but there's no more blue and white disease thank god we got rid of no that. i just think it's funny how yeah anyway uh let's move <laughs> on because there are other huge pieces of news that broke nah. yesterday including Michael Ann Lauer becoming the 90% owner of the Ottawa Senators. The rest of the 10% is split between a few people, I believe uh, a local businessman by the last name of Mel Holtra. And I didn't know if there was any uh, connection to Manny Mel Holtra. I was wondering that too. But uh, because it's a, it's a, it's a distinct name. Yeah. Just rolls off the tongue too. Uh, But Steve Dangle broke some news guys. (laughs) Sort of. Steve Dangle. Not a huge surprise, but I'm hearing Steve Steos to the Sens for a role, likely as GM. And Lauer once hired Steos away from the Leafs to join the Hamilton Bulldogs. Right. So Steve, insider man, dangle. So there's there's a few things there. Um, number one, I do not uh, take that back. That's what I was told. That's what I believe. I'm confident in that information. Okay. The, if if I could do it again, I would have sat on it for a little bit hmm. because I think I mistakenly gave people the impression this was going to happen soon. Yeah, it's not. Uh, as Darren Dreger reported, uh, Steve Steos is still working with the Edmonton Oilers um, on their draft right now. Yep. Uh, Pierre Torian is still the GM in Ottawa. I haven't heard anything regarding poor Pierre too because he's he's I know shit for so many years and now it's like hey things are gonna be good bye I haven't heard that he's leaving so like I could easily see him surviving this like he's been he's been fired on Twitter like how many times oh yeah you know so so there there are uh, a lot of moving parts here Steve Steos is still with the Oilers Pierre Dorian is still with the Ottawa Senators and most importantly uh the Ann Lauer group 
will not take control of the Ottawa Senators for another few months, I believe September. Yeah, he still has to sell 10% of the Montreal Canadiens, which he owns. He was a lifelong Habs fan. Yeah. Lives in Toronto, of course. Of course. Um, I I actually did a little deep dive on him and uh, read a bunch of articles. So he... uh, was born and ra- he was born in France, but his family moved to Quebec. And he said, like, he comes from nothing. This mm. Ann Lauer guy, nothing. Wow. Um, and uh, he dropped out of university and worked at McCain Foods in Toronto in their in their delivery administration. And he had studied business administration in your at York University. And I guess he just he launched his own trucking company in his mid twenties. And they were the company. It's called ATS Healthcare and Lauer Transportation Services. And they're the ones that were moving the COVID vaccine across the country. No oh, way! Wow. So he has all the refrigerated trucks. Yeah. He's the one that was getting it to all the like shoppers drug wow. marks or whatever. So we can't trust him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> He's in with Gates and that's, the and the chips in our brain. That's right. That's right. That which means Gary is now. Yeah, too, but think of how good. Think of how good the player tracking is going to be, though. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> um, Dude, forget in the jersey; it's right in the bloodstream. He also turned around the Hamilton Bulldogs. Uh, yeah. Within a couple of years of buying them, he turned them into a profitable organization, and they won the Calder Cup, which means nothing. <laughs> the Calder Cup means nothing. Um, and then, of course, he bought a majority or a minority stake, excuse me, in the Montreal Canadiens, uh, which is the affi- you know the Bulldogs were the affiliate uh, for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, and that has been the same ever since. Yeah. So it's possible still that uh, Pierre Dorian is, well, I think it's likely actually that Pierre Dorian is the GM in Ottawa by the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, is the day Ann Lauer takes over, maybe Dorian gets fired and he brings in Steos from Edmonton. Um, it is still possible that Dorian maybe does the whole season mm-hmm. for Ottawa. Uh, but I think the long-term goal, the writing is on the wall, that it'll be Steos in the organization, probably as GM. If not as GM, then some other role. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, just for clarity, too, uh, Adam, you mentioned he has a 90% stake in the Moholtra family. Uh, so the uh, Moholtra family is a part of his 90% stake. Oh, the they are. 10% oh, okay, is uh, the Melnick family in the deal oh, the trust. retains 10%. So his daughters, they still own 10% oh, of the uh, deal. And one thing that was holding it up was there was a whole bunch of ass from the Melnick side that we're starting to learn about. And one of them was that if um, Ann Lauer was ever to sell again, that they want to maintain their 10%. So even if he sells pieces, like their 10% is always going to stay 10%. And there's a lot of contention going back and forth about that. And also them wanting uh, Ann Lauer to pay their capital gains tax <laughs> on <shit>. the deal. <laughs> Eat shit. <laughs> and them your capital just, gains is 25%. Go fuck And them up. being told, no, that's <laughs> yeah. not how this works. Because uh, Eugene Melnick bought this franchise for under, what was that? It was, eight, it was like 90 million or something, wasn't it's, it? It's, it's, I think it was 90. $93 million, yeah. uh, if I remember the n- wow. number correctly. So $93 million, and today it sells for $950, $950 million. So your capital gains on that are... It's a quarter billion. $800 million. Well, no, your capital... Sorry, yeah, your capital gains, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, 5% so, of that. So your capital gains on that are $800 million, and you have to pay a tax of 25% on that capital gains tax. And then they were like, we don't want to pay this. Let's try and get these guys to pay it. Yeah. And Ann Lauer said, no. That's so, your problem. Well, so what's interesting about that, too, and the reason they would have wanted that is apparently, and I have yet to see this confirmed, there was a ton of debt mm-hmm. with the senators. Like hundreds of millions of dollars of debt that the senators were in. That's what I've been hearing. And so what would happen is you got to pay that debt back. But it doesn't matter that your capital gain was against that, right? Like there is still a gigantic. So I think, listen, the the the, the Melnick Trust is still going to walk away with two or three hundred million bucks. But I, I've heard extremely high numbers in terms of the amount of debt this wipes out for them. And and when you make that purchase, then you could pay your lenders back. But I, I, ooh, it's like it's an ugly number that plus the tax. You think that the Melnick Trust is going to walk away? Oh, they just get nine hundred fifty million bucks. I would be shocked oh. if it was a third of that. I'd be wow. shocked. Now, and you're missing a pretty still a lot of money. You're missing a pretty juicy part. Is supposedly uh, as part of this. I want to say this is Bruce Garriott mm-hmm. um, and Lauer supposedly put an ultimatum like, "Hey, either we get this deal done today or I'm out." Mm-hmm. 
or by, or well, by Tuesday. So, it was. and this is the thing is he was the preferred partner because he's been a uh, minority shareholder in the Montreal Canadiens for how many years? Uh, Ann Lauer, the reason this process took so long is because Gary wanted Ann Lauer. He trusts him. He, you know, he's been, Gary's been taken to the cleaners over some of the ownership situations, the Jim Ball silly, the Boots Del Biagio. Uh, like some of these guys were literal, like one of them was like, didn't have the money. Uh, and several of the bidders in this process it didn't have the money. Uh, and but one of them was like a criminal, straight up criminal, did not like faked having the money. I think it's Nashville that he bought. And so Gary is extremely careful with this. He knows Ann Lowry, trusts Ann Lowry, he knows he's got a, a thriving business. Um, so uh, but Michael Ann Lauer was like, okay, well, you want me to be the owner of this team and I'm interested, but why would I move off of my price if I'm your preferred candidate? So it was getting him up over the nine hundred million dollar mark because the yeah. NHL wants to say we sold him for a billion. Gary's they didn't, the but they want to say that. And in the end, there was only four bids amongst yep. all the the drama that we had over the last couple of months in Ottawa and all these people interested. It came down to four four groups and a couple of them that they're still unsure if the financing ever would have come through. So it wasn't as crazy of a bidding war. It was just more drama behind the scenes and just people dropping out and coming through. Here's what's interesting, though. Uh, you know, I always say when teams go for like a number one center at the trade deadline and then someone else gets them, mm -hmm. do they just go, oh, well, I guess we just won't get one. No, <laughs> they try to go out and get another one. Yeah. So all these different groups tried to buy the Ottawa Senators. What do they try to buy next? Uh, an expansion basketball franchise in Las Vegas. There you go. That's how you make it happen. Or an expansion hockey team in Houston. <laughs> or an expansion hockey team in Atlanta, which I think would work today. It is they going want, to work. It's they going, it, they're going, dude, they're going back. They're going back. I don't know why anybody thinks it won't work in Atlanta. Of course it'll work. They were okay. idiots the last time they did the Thrasher, Thrasher's expansion. If you go back and look at the expansion rules that Columbus, Nashville, Atlanta, and Minnesota had to go through, they were so draconian that none of those teams ended up with NHL caliber teams. And it took them five to seven years to dig themselves out of that hole. His, uh, Atlanta never had a chance, and it's a, it's remarkable that, I mean, Minnesota was a prime market anyway. The NHL should have never left Minnesota. Stupid. Columbus, it's great that it's worked so well. Nashville, for a lot of people, was a surprise, although one of the best fan bases in the league. Atlanta should have worked, but they had terrible ownership and made terrible decisions. That's going to work this time, and it'll be back in the next five years. So this illustrates, one, how bad the expansion Atlanta Thrashers were, and two, how awful the dead puck era was Ugh. for the Atlanta Thrashers. Their leading scorer in both goals and points, Andrew Brunette with 23 goals. What year is this? This is 99-2000. 23 goals, 50 points. Mm -hmm. I always drafted him as a third line center in my fantasy like NHL. Third players. line. Their second leading scorer in goals and points, Ray Ferraro. Hey! With 19 goals and 44 points. Then only two more players hit 30 points. Nelson Emerson and Yannick Tremblay. I liked Nelson Emerson. He was a good player. He was a good, good player. Uh, I want to throw this out there. Um, just on the Thrashers, they spent 99 to 2011 in Atlanta. They made the playoffs once. Yeah. And they got swept. Just Awful. How do you expect to build a team or a fan base when you get 14 wins in your first year and you don't make the playoffs uh, for your first one to six years and then you make one time and then you're never in the playoffs? Again? And they had good players roll through town, but never all at the same time. No. No. It was a horrendous way to try and build a franchise and the the NHL did a disservice there and they didn't have the best owners either because Gary um, wasn't good at picking owners. Yeah. And that, if they take another stab at it, it's going to be I want to throw this out. That's a Hall of Famer. I want to throw this out there. Andrew Burnett, by the way, is one of the only players from that era to have played for all four expansion teams. He started with Nashville, then went to Atlanta, then went to Minnesota, then a few years in Colorado where he had an 83 point year and then ended off his career with the Minnesota Wild and a few oh, games oh, for the ah. Blackhawks. I just thought that was a neat stat. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Burnett, expansion <laughs> king. Yes. Uh, and also uh, Florida Panthers, former head coach. Is there anybody who's been on Seattle and Vegas? That's a good question. I'm sure there is. You know, says you're cracking. I don't know. I'm not sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of movement. You expect that most teams have had a Vegas Golden Knight. But Seattle. They fire everybody at the door. Yeah, that's true. They yeah. did. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Seattle had to select somebody from Vegas. 
No, nope. they not. Nope. Oh, no, they, they weren't were. a part of it. They weren't a part of it. Yeah. You're right. Damn. I'm looking at the roster. Do you see any? I am looking, looking, looking. Okay. All right. Let's go. Everly Schwartz, Bjorkstrand, Gord, McCann, Jared McCann. Nope. No. Uh, <laughs> Wenberg, Tenev, Tolvanen, Veneers, Geeky, Sprong, Donato. Whole damn team. Alexiak, Larson, Schultz, uh, nope. Borgen, Vince Dunn, Kale Dude, Curry, I don't think they did. Carson Soucy, Martin Jones, Philip Grubauer. No. Burkowski, Jonas, Eunice Donskoy. Nope. Uh, former Chris, Panther. Chris Drieger. Nope. Former Panther. Lots of former Panthers. All the good for, for a, lot, a lot of turnover, man. The Panthers, the Panthers depth could have really helped them if they'd hung on to it. <laughs> the, I think the, the model for this year's Stanley Cup final should be fuck it. Trade them. What we need is more Sherratts and good Bransons. Yeah. Less of these Marsha shows. Uh, Patrick Waugh has resigned as the head of the Quebec Ram, Ramparts. Uh, Kevin Weeks oh, wow. tweeting that him going to Ottawa to be the head coach makes too much sense. Although that's not what I heard from from everything he said last season. Insider. Well, no, but I I don't know if I can say an insider, but I think Patrick Waugh said at the beginning of this season, I am I am done after this year. I want to spend more time with my family. When oh. you're a head coach, you're working like 15 hours a day. So either he was lying uh, or which never happens. No one's ever never. lied. Uh, or um, it's just a coinky dink. And we were told that this was going to happen and it happened. Right. I also don't understand like, I understand moving on from DJ Smith that that's not a fit anymore. I get that. and say, He drives Sens fans crazy. But I don't understand bringing in Patrick Waugh, who had the one good year. Uh, like, get, no. you, can't, you, can't, you can't find one good junior coach? Drives ticket sales. Does it? A bit. Oh, it would get people talking. I don't think the Sens fans, I don't think Sen, the Sens need to drive ticket sales going into this year. It would it would attract... I think they're going to be jacked anyway. It would it would attract a fan base that they've sort of lacked for a long time. Like Pierre Lebrun uh, brought this up at a Puck Talks once. Like one of the biggest mistakes Ottawa made is they never really uh, made enough effort to attract, you know, Francophone fans from Quebec, mm. which if you don't live in the area is across the bridge. <laughs> there's a, if there's Ottawa, there's a bridge, there's Quebec. It's right there. And if you go 40 miles North, you might find the arena. Dude. <laughs> it's just, it's the worst location. It used to be in a farmer's field. It is now it's, surrounded by house. It's so bad. What is it? Like you go to Byward market, which I really like. Oh, it's in, amazing. In Ottawa. And like you could go like for dinner there. And all right, let's get an Uber to the game. Oh, it's going to be 45 minutes until we get. You were making a point about uh, attracting Quebec fans. Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. So anyway, no, like I, it is a sexy thing to do, mm. but is it what's best for your hockey team? That matters, right? Mm. Because <sighs> for you as the owner, it's day one. Mm -hmm. For the fans, it's not. This is a team that's supposed to be on the upswing, and I just don't know if it's going to work that way. There's going to be a lot of change in the front office, probably a lot of change on the bench. Uh, Debrinket's going to be traded. What's that going to fetch? Yep. There's there's a lot, man. There's a lot. I Progress isn't linear, and they could go up. They could also go down. For a team that had playoff aspirations last season, there's a lot of... A lot of messy situations in Ottawa that need cleaning up right now. Yeah. Well, Norris is, I mean, I, I keep going back to, I thought they were fine until Josh Norris got hurt. Right. But if but, one person is cutting you, is cutting you that deep, then, right? Right. It's a depth. And I get, I get like if the Leafs lost Tavares or Matthews, they would be less good. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I still think they'd make the playoffs. And they have some young pieces just getting into the lineup. It's a, they're a big wild card. But like you look at, okay, they don't have a first or second round or third round pick this season. They don't oh, have... Chikrin, I forgot. Yeah, they made that Chikrin deal and then he didn't play the end of the season, right? Because he got injured towards the end there, last couple of games. And then uh, you have Debrinket who wants out. You have your GM who doesn't know if he's going to have a job with the new ownership. Yeah. You have new ownership coming in. You might fire head coach and bring in whoever. Like there's so much in flux in Ottawa. And it looked like at the beginning of this season, there was at least some stabilization. Yep. And now it's just all chaos once again.
And it's disappointing because they haven't had success in quite a bit of time to look like it was coming. And now it might be on hold for a little bit. I, I still think there's an opportunity here, though, if they get somebody figured out quickly or if, the, if Dorian just keeps doing what he's doing. There's a chance that this this team is is like what, what I said at the beginning of the last season was is expecting the Senators from going to go from near last to in the playoffs is too much. A 40 point swing essentially yeah. is what they were looking for. They finished with like 60. You need to get around 100 to get in. Um, I don't think that 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 was ever possible. However, if you really look at the Senators now, and they're an extremely competitive division, we don't know what Boston looks like. We don't know how still broken Tampa is because, yeah. again, they're still broken. I don't care what you say. We don't know what roster the Leafs are going to ice. No, the Leafs, could, the Leafs could be terrible. You don't know. Like, there's lots of teams that have... I mean, Vegas didn't make the playoffs last year. Lots of good teams miss. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, with Buffalo on the rise, we still don't know much about Detroit. They still got work to do. If Ottawa can figure out a little bit on defense and finally get the goaltending that they really need and Norris to be healthy, why not? The Atlantic's jump ball. Why can't they be sixth in the East? Ottawa? Yeah. Why can't in the they be East. third? Sixth in the East. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, not, oh. not the division. No, in the East. No, in the Just East. in the okay. East. They could. Why can't they be oh, sixth? The whole Eastern Conference to me is jump ball. Well, yeah. What are the Penguins? We know the Rangers are good. What are the Capitals? I don't know, Adam. Adam. What do you think about Dubis betting on the core that the Penguins have? I think it's a really nice quote. <laughs> I think I should call my therapist. I, I got to make a button. You got to make a button about Dubis. What do you? What's the button going to be? The, the when he's in the press conference, he's like I believe in the. We Balkan. can and we will. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to make that for you. Greyhound score every time we bring it up. You oh. can reference it. I feel like listen. I I liked Kyle Dubas a lot. Uh, I think I loved most of the moves that he made. Loved most of the moves that he made, but. Uh, you don't need to say that shit, man. <laughs> and and I, honestly, if there's a weakness to Kyle Dubas's game, it's fucking press conferences. It lost him his job, dude. Like I, I, I think he would have been the perfect. That's GM. a good point. Yeah, he would have been. Listen, there's there's a learn from Lou Lamorello. There's a cap on the ice, but there's no cap off the ice. And I think yeah. the best money the Leafs could have spent over the last seven years is just hire someone to be, show up and be like, "That's enough, Kyle." A jargon specialist. Yeah. yeah. Say a lot of nothing. Not and even. Give me some rhetoric. A, uh, just a tutter. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what I think about the Chicago Steel? Uh, that's it. <laughs> if Cal Dubas was a was a fire Pokemon, water is his press conference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you just <laughs> it is the if you scissors a, to his rock. If you got a Squirtle, I mean paper to his rock. If you got a Squirtle and just shoot a um, blast at blast Charmander, voice. at Charmander, water like, cannon, water cannon is what I was looking for. You know, he's going down, and that's that's Cal Dubas at press conferences. He can't. Uh, he can't handle it. <laughs> so uh, you need to extend this player. Well, you know, I think he's a really important. You could have hired me to do that for a nominal fee, and it would have been the best money you ever spent. <laughs> if you leave Kyle up there, he says, we're going to extend him no matter what happens. <laughs> see, see how much better that quote was that I stopped you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the one thing that MLSE has done is they've hired um, lost. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, they've hired they've hired a couple of very likable people. Bradshaw Living seems likable. Uh, Darko Radovojevic, who's the new head coach of the Raptors. They I watched that press conference yesterday. And by the way, S. Barahaney from Objective Basketball Podcast at SDPN Sports was there yesterday. Uh, but I, I I watched that press conference and I'm like, none of this is about where the direction of the team is going. It's just all about how cool Darko is. Mm -hmm. And he's like taking cool pictures or whatever. We're completely ignoring the fact that the Raptors had the worst trade deadline I've seen in Toronto sports in maybe two decades. My, one of the worst misreads I've ever seen, ever, 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 that people are just sort of ignoring because we still love Masai and we do. And then they're like, hey, here's this head coach. And, and Masai says at the end of the coach, he's like, we just want to win. We just want to win. And everybody's like, yes. <laughs> Woo. He, okay. We like this guy. I also like Masai. But you know that thing we just said earlier? Say about, less. About how, well, about that. But about how, you know, certain people can ride a Stanley Cup championship for a very long mm -hmm. time, even though they're not very good. No, you're not suggesting. It's over. Oh, I didn't. I didn't suggest that. The glow is over. The glow's over, right? I didn't suggest that either. You, you guys are extrapolating based on the factual things I said. He misread this team all season long. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Gentlemen, I got one more thing. What? 
Oh, we got one more thing. Pizza. We bring up. We bring up. It's not pizza. Kyle Dubas. It's not pizza. Damn it. We bring up Kyle. I got you hot dogs. Come on. Oh, that was pretty good. Um, we bring up Kyle Dubas. Kyle Dubas made a move this morning. Huh? Officially, Jason Spezza will be the assistant general manager in Pittsburgh. Remember, he was the assistant regional manager, assistant to the regional manager here in Toronto. Uh, that's an office joke. Um, Jason Spezza, we have for, no... For those who don't know, what is the office? Uh, um, uh, Jason Spezza, we know this. Uh, very, very good hockey player. Seems like a great guy. I have no idea. And anybody who says they do has no idea of his management experience. I don't get it. He's um, young enough to make the roster. But you have to imagine, yeah, he is young enough to make the pain. He could be part or of the core, core five. Yeah. Um, I think <laughs> Fuck. I think Jason Spezza is in a learner's role for the next three to five months or months, years. Uh, kind of like what Steve Eiserman and Joe Sackick and some of the other guys that are have turned into great general managers are doing. Right. Like I, when, when I think about this, I think about Steve Eiserman being on Agent Provocateur and talking about how he was mentored by the Ken Holland group. And I say group because there was a lot of a lot of people associated with that. And they had a ton of success. And um, and then he went to Tampa. And I think, you know, Penguins fans are like, well, is he great? And and Leaf fans would have no idea. We have no idea if Jason. We don't know what Jason Spezza's ideas are. No, but Penguins fans, here's what I can tell you. Um he was sort of the locker room liaison, but also he watched every single game in the box with Dubas last year. And he went out scouting with Dubas last year at non-leaf events. Like he was out at international events. Mm -hmm. This is obviously a guy Dubas respects and a mind that he respects. Um, so it it's absolutely no surprise that a dude loyal enough to quit the moment Dubas was gassed mm -hmm. uh, by the Leafs organization, it, it doesn't surprise me at all that Spets is in Pittsburgh. And I think it's a good thing. Like, you want to give Dubas the tools to succeed, right? Yes. He's your guy. And Jason Spets is one of those tools. He he obviously really likes him. Uh, Spets uh, uh, is either guy 40. Yeah, Spets is 40. Has to be. Yeah. He's exactly 40. Yeah. Wow, Greybeard. You know, so like it's a, it's a that's a young front office. I don't why does Jason Spezza get to jump the line? Why does he get Cuz he's a hockey player. He's special advisor. No, he's no, assistant, he's, assistant GM. he's assistant general manager now. Oh shit, really? Yeah. yeah. Pittsburgh has named oh. him assistant general manager. Wow. In his okay, second, never mind. In his <laughs> second year out of the NHL. Mm -hmm. That's that's that when I said I don't get it is I don't understand the title assistant general manager to a guy who is two years removed from playing in the NHL. How about this? He's twelve years older than Dubas was when he got his first AGM job. Yeah, but what was Dubas's management experience at the time? General manager of the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. <laughs> that's pretty good. A it lot of a, good. a lot of players get to skip the line because the the thought is rightly or wrongly. They spent X amount of years in the league. In, in Spezza's case, it's over 15. Mm -hmm. You have a pretty good working understanding. You know a lot of people who are within your age group. And in Spezza's age group, they're aging out of the game and into management roles. Um, you're well connected. Holy shit. Do we have a lot of rain coming down right now? Yeah. <laughs> you can't hear it. They can't hear it. They can't uh, hear it. Can't hear it. No. Um, so I, oh. think, I, think that in the, I think that's why that's the theory. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. But you can say... Without any, uh, without anybody complaining about it, that you have 15 years of experience in said industry, plus. So, in management, maybe not. You also um, these players. Um, we look at it as the moment they retire is when their tutelage starts. Mm -hmm. Yep. There was oh man, I do not remember where I read it, but uh, Jody Shelley, uh, who is a longtime Blue Jacket flyer. Um, he knew he was on, you know, my lovely saying he wasn't on the back nine. He was on the back three. He, he, <laughs> he knew, he knew his playing career was coming to an end. Uh -huh. And so while he was still playing, he was asking those questions Yeah, like, Hey, if I want to be in management, what do I got to do? What do I got to learn? What do I got to? So I'm sure, I'm sure part of the reason Spezza signed in Toronto and stayed here is they were like, Hey, we'll help usher you into your post playing sure, career. Sure, of course. So I'm I'm sure it started. Well, I thought that was the plan with Wayne as well, Wayne Simmons. I wouldn't be surprised for him to get a role. Now the tricky thing is with it Wayne, Pittsburgh? Huh? 
Uh, well, we we know he likes Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right. Played there with the Flyers. That that'd be hilarious, though. Yeah. That's one of those ones where it's like Ron Hextall as the GM of the Penguins. Feels wrong. Feel feels wrong. Was. <laughs> but I don't think in Wayne's case it would be. No. I don't know. He also has businesses here in Toronto, and I know he wanted to be here. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think I don't know. I don't know what he hmm. wants long term. Yeah. Um, it's just tricky with him because you know he was brought in by the previous regime or whatever but is it really the previous regime um, Shanahan's still there it's, I think it was third confused. I think platinum seat ghosts I was tweeting it out today I think he, he said something along the lines of so is it July 1st we find out that Pridham is the GM of the Pittsburgh Penguins because remember Dubas is the president he's yeah. not the GM well he's uh interim general manager that's right yeah it sure seems like if Pridham would have if Pridham was going there wouldn't it have happened already? No. So he said, we're not going to be making that move until uh, July because some of the parties that we want to talk to will not be available until the summer, is what he said in his press conference. So it sounds like he wants to go hmm. to somebody who's currently employed and a bit younger and that they need to steal away from a team. I tell you what, Shanahan better be fucking right about this. Well, I mean, they, it's going to suck when Eric Telsky or Matthew Dorsch or Brandon Pridham is running the Pittsburgh Penguins with Kyle Dubas. It's going to be one of those three. Like, it's going to fucking suck because <laughs> that's going to be a dynamo front office. Nah. I think it's going to be Matthew Darsh in Pittsburgh. That's my guess. Yeah, that, I was. I'm leaning towards there as well. Stan Dursch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we do a press conference? Yes. OK. All right. Run on time. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Now, this is a rare thing on the show, on the Steve Dangle podcast, but we got something right. Today, we have Adam Wild trivia. Oh, geez. Adam, this question is for you. Okay. During the Napoleonic Wars, <laughs> uh, it's from uh, Fran Mo on our press conference questions channel on our discord server go to which S by the way how do you get to the uh, how do you get to this sdpn.ca if you go there you'll see a little uh image that says join us on discord click that and then join us on discord and so make sure when you do join disregard all of robert and jamie's uh oh rules. yeah definitely don't do go it. on there and don't listen to anything robert says yeah and all the other mods too yeah they have no real power here <laughs> Actually, they do. Listen to what they say. Yeah, stop. You guys, don't be jerks. Yeah, that's the basic rules of the of the Discord is don't be an asshole. So I think that's fair, right? Yeah, and listen to the mods. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Including mod of Game Over Auto. <laughs> that's right. Uh, go ahead, Jesse. Go Can ahead. Adam name oh, no. the last head coach whose team won a series against the Vegas Golden Knights? So I need to know the team. Who's the last ah. So that's two years ago. Ah. See? It's oh, Steve. it's you Dominic Ducharme. <laughs> wow. Not what? Jeff. It's Dom. <laughs> but it wasn't really. It was Mark Bergevin's pick. It was, it was Luke Richardson. It was Luke Richardson because. Hey. Dom, yeah. Luke Richardson did win that series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that got me good. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's good. Oh. It took me a minute. I did not get that right away. Luke Richardson, I'm convinced, is going to be a good coach in the NHL. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm convinced, um, but you know we'll see what happens in Chicago. But I I think that guy's the guy Montreal swung and missed on, or should have swung and missed on at least, or should have tried. Um, keep going, Jess. What do we else we have? Steve, I don't understand this question, but it has a couple upvotes. That's Reddit. It has a couple of reactions. Okay. So I'm gonna ask it, and I th feel like it's something you might like. James O F writes, Steve, if Dutch's gang was a hockey team. <laughs> What would everyone's position be? So you're talking about the Vanderlyn gang in Red Dead Redemption 2. And if you haven't played it yet, there may be spoilers in my answer. So what what exactly was the question again? Uh, if Dutch's gang was a hockey team, what would everyone's position be? Ooh. Like position on the ice, I guess. Yes. All right. Well, Bill Williamson is big plotting dumb defenseman who makes mistakes and gets blamed for everything. Yep. Uh, that one is the free space. I can't wait for Hosea. Uh, Sean McGuire is Michael Bunting. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. Um, easily. 
easily. Um, Kieran Duffy is like a Jake Gensel type. Like there's talent there, but he's also like, instead of doing anything, he's like, shut up, jerk. Um, Arthur Morgan is Mark Stone, captain of the Stanley Cup champions. He's just the best. John Marston gives big Phil Kessel vibes. Like just nice guy, tries hard, loves the game. Yeah. Don't ask me any fucking questions. Just let me do has, ha- has some big goals. Has some big goals. Like good power play presence. Yeah, there's a little bit of there's a little bit of Phil Kessel vibes with Charles Smith as well. Hmm. Uh, am I doing good so far? Mark Giordano is Hosea. I've just, never played, so I can't. Just the play. oldest. <laughs> but now I'm trying to think of the like bad guys. Like, is Mark Giordano who's coming Dutch? back? I'm sorry? G- Gio's coming back, right? You signed. He is. Yeah, I think he's coming back. Uh, yeah. Who is Dutch? Who's Dutch? Who's a who's a villain? A charismatic leader who's completely full of shit. So, hmm. <laughs> oh, the entire Winnipeg Jets locker room. <laughs> no. Wow. Oh, jeez. All right. Wouldn't wouldn't that be Dutch? Isn't that Dutch in a nutshell? Just leading us all. Yeah, it seems that way. Cliff? Yeah. Um. And who's Micah? See, Brad Marchand seems like a decent guy off the ice, so he can't be Micah. Right. Micah's got to suck. Who sucks? Just trying to think of who sucks. Everyone, you help me out. Tweet me. Who's Micah Bell? This CNE wrote this on our Discord. Sheldon Keefe has been outcoached in every playoff series of his life in the NHL. So I think we know what he can't do. The let's see what he can do thing makes no sense to me. Do we really think Brad Living coming in will overhaul him as a coach? Who's we? Who's we? That's what I want to know. Who's we's doing a lot of work in that question. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what Adam thinks. It doesn't matter what you think, Jesse. It matters a little bit what Maddie thinks. Yes. It matters what Brandon Shanahan thinks. And for some reason, unless... He, the Shanahan sender regards, just absolutely <laughs> sta- stabs one of the uh, core four in the back. Um, he's convinced that running it back is the right choice. Uh. I agree. <laughs> so, uh, I agree like that that front, noise. not the sentiment. Mm, I know. Here's so, the one thing, like, the one thing Vegas didn't bring it back to this is that, like, nobody's comfortable there. You can't be. And and I do feel like there's a comfort with the Leafs. I do. I am starting to feel that. I can't deny it anymore. You can hate me for saying that. I'm fine with it. I do feel there's a comfort being a Toronto Maple Leaf. And I and I Why? I understand love and respect loyalty, but results have to matter too. Yeah, like I don't understand why anyone would hold that against you. The two teams in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, and I think they're an extremely talented team, so I'm not s- suggesting they're bad. The 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 Hurricanes have made some pretty significant changes over the years, yeah, as well, and some really difficult decisions and taking flyers on some guys. The Dallas Stars have completely they have like two cores, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, um, they've had to make some really difficult decisions. Um, all the teams that had playoff success have. Had a lot of turnover. Make smart moves. Like, I don't know why that's a wild thing to say. Uh, and that that's the thing is that, like, just because we can't conceive of what would come back for X player doesn't mean a deal can't happen. I think that's all. You see a lot of that online where it's mm-hmm. like, well, you can't trade one of the core four. How could you possibly get better? Um, and, and I think it's like, well, th- then you know what? Keep doing the same thing. Yep. Like that's literally we've asked general managers to be creative and bold. And I think we're entering an era of creative and bold general managers a lot more than they used to be. It was just before it was like, oh, the cap. This the trade cap. deadline was one of the best ever. It was great. It was really good because teams finally, I, I keep saying it with with COVID. COVID, there's less of tomorrow than there used to yeah. be. Yeah. And uh, GMs think more short term. And that's great for the entertainment value. Mm-hmm. So it's such a great point, Adam, that, hey. Maybe you just try something <laughs> because like, what you're doing isn't working and it's not our responsibility to come up with the trades that'll that'll work in your favor. That's that's your job. You know who's not even a candidate for a job? Like not even 
you won't even get an interview is anyone who's like, we're going to do a uh, five year rebuild. Mm -hmm. We're going to make the playoffs in five years. Get the fuck out of my office. Five years before we even make the playoffs. You stink. Get out of here. Get more clever. Whatever you need to do to make the playoffs in less than that. Do that. Fuck off to some other front office where you can take this long trudge to nowhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's five years? No way. No team means to take five years to rebuild. Mm -hmm. It's So what you're saying is you're hoping to be bad for long enough to draft your way out of your problems without doing anything clever in the meantime. So Sheldon Keith. Oh yeah. So yeah, man, like <laughs> uh, firing him this off season doesn't quite feel like the move, but also you got to go into the fucking playoffs thinking that your coach is going to outcoach the other guy. Mm -hmm. It's tough right now, man. It's tough. But that is why it's interesting that they have a new set of eyes looking at it. He does not have control under Kyle Dubas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much of this had to do with Kyle. Under Kyle Dubas, Sheldon Keefe did not have control of the team. That's In fair. the first week of the season, when the Leafs were playing like dog shit, he criticized the team's best players. And what did he do? He had to walk it back the next day. He publicly apologized is what he did. Mm -hmm. That's pathetic. It's pathetic he had to do that. It's pathetic that any of the players expected it of him. It, it's pathetic anyone in the organization thought they needed to have their feelings uh, coddled like that. Dude, they were playing like shit. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Keefe also didn't have control of the roster because of how tight Dubis and company played to the cap. Like they were running so close to the sun that there's no roster decisions to be made yeah. because they have it down to a penny of who can be in the starting lot and be skating on the ice. And guess what? That means everybody's safe. They can't send anybody down. They can't make a trade because the exact right amount of guys who need to be here are here and they need to play these guys. And it's they've run into trouble with their goalie situation where they're playing all these emergency backups because there's no choice here for the head coach. And I know there's a pecking order here. Uh, and everything, but I, I've I've thought for a few years now, the guys who are pressing to get into this lineup cannot love this salary setup. Hmm. Like, I'm on the Marlies right now. Because why? I'm on the Marlies right now because the richest team in hockey can't fucking afford to have me up. Yeah. And you're praying for an injury because then LTI are open up some cap space. And like, these guys, some of them are making like 70 grand. Like compared to league minimum, which is more than 10 times that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's anyway, I could see why there may be some unrest. <laughs> but no, let's keep the whole fucking thing together. All right. You guys want to end on our favorite TikToker ever? Yeah. No! Yes. Hoopify. No! Hoop like no! Hoopify. No! We have Hoopify. an update. L Lucas on Twitter uh, tweeted at Hoopify. They said, LMAO, the Steve Dangle podcast liked your baby Gronk video. No. And Hoopify replied. No. And said, that was hilarious. That was no. hilarious. So <laughs> <laughs> Hoopify oh saw our last podcast. Oh, that's great. The segment that we referenced him, and he thinks it was hilarious. Oh, that's cool. I You got us good, Hoopify. Yeah, I that tell you what, dude, <laughs> I, last night was so funny. So I'm, I'm making something to eat in the kitchen. And... Mrs. Dangle is sitting on the couch um, with her. She's just scrolling TikTok and the sound is on. And all I hear is baby Gronk is the best athlete coming out of blah, blah, blah. And then scroll. Did you know that Livy was with baby Gronk? And, yeah. and she's just flipping through it all. And every now and then you just hear it go, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, the I, fuck I, is I had a... I, Natalie asked me how the show was, and I said, I think we had a funny first segment. Like, I felt like it went well. But try to describe it. Well, and she said, well, what did you guys talk about? And I went, uh. <laughs> I said, you're going to probably have to watch it. <laughs> like, there's no way I can explain this. Do you have 20 you minutes think? to explain why this is funny? She goes, what do you think Riz is? <laughs> <laughs> so like, our what? last update from Hoopify. I got oh, you, didn't I? Oh. We Last episode, we got Steve to, well, we got Adam to ask Steve's wife if, uh, we thought you were a Riz God and we got an answer. And like, kudos to you, your wife of how many years? Uh, eight. 
eight years still thinks you're Almost a Riz fine. god. Because you rizzed up, baby. You, yeah. You, you rizzed her up and, and you got her and you kept her for all these years. And that's very impressive that she still thinks you're a Riz god. So uh, SDPN listener, uh, I think Will Looper, W Looper yeah, on Twitter, w- hey, yes. decided to ask his wife, cap oh. or no cap, am I a Riz god for real? <laughs> and, and he filmed it and he sent us a video. Yes, and I think... No. <laughs> yes, you did. Please all, let me see this. All Big- the husbands out there... Ask your partner if they think you're a Riz God. And oh, God. That's Will, incredible. I think you're starting a trend because we're going to play your video here and his submission of whether or not his wife thinks he is a Riz God. You guys ready? Yes. <laughs> Morning. Morning. Babe, I told you. cap or no cap? Am I a Riz God for real? Cap. <laughs> 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 this the face. first word of the All question right. you have homework put, put this face on the screen <laughs> look how confused this poor wife Man, is he looks like she, she's looking she's giving the hoopify look right now the, she, she is so confused by like the situation looks like she's just been told she's going to jail like <laughs> uh, I, you have you have homework SDPN oh listeners will like oh my god you now have to ask your partner uh, or your friend or your mom if you are the Riz God. Do not ask your mom. Yeah, no, ask your mom if you're a Riz God. <laughs> cap, no, but you have to ask them cap or no cap. Cap or no cap, for real, for real. For real. Um, <laughs> There's a parade inside my city, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, let's find out who is a Riz God and who is not. Remember, it's your homework for next episode. We're going to feature it on the show. That's funny. Yeah, if, if you do this, we'll, we'll put it on. We'll put it on the show. I, I want to go Riz or no Riz. Yeah. <laughs> uh, c- cap? <laughs> Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.